For this video, I'm going to be doing something completely different. And this video is going to be my album review of Mariah Carey's latest album, Me, I Am Mariah, The Elusive Chanteuse. So if you would like to see a review of that album, please stay tuned. Now, of course, in true Mariah fashion, it wouldn't be an extravagant, fabulous event, darling, if I didn't have a nice glass of bubbly. So tonight, we are going to be drinking the Once Upon a Vine Enchanted Woods Bubbly. And this is a limited release, and when I saw it in the store, I thought this is the perfect festive drink for this occasion. So let's get to it. A little bubbly for this festive occasion. Mm. This is delectable. I usually drink Prosecco because Mariah, of course, Miss Mariah the elusive Chanteuse likes Prosecco, but this bottle just sounded way too fabulous to not drink it. So that's what we'll be drinking tonight. It's just a sparkling wine, which is basically the same thing as a Prosecco. Okay, so this is going to be my album review, of course, of Mariah Carey's Me, I Am Mariah, The Elusive Chanteuse. And this is by, of course, Kazuko, The Elusive Original Lamb. Now, just to give you a little bit of background, um, I mainly started getting into Mariah Carey around the time when she became Mimi, so around E equals MC squared, The Emancipation of Mimi, the memoirs. So that's when I really got into Mariah. So I brought all that history into listening to her newest album. That was the first mistake I made. I realized I have to listen to this as a separate masterpiece, a separate art of work. I can't listen to it with um, the mindset of her other albums. So that was the first mistake I made. When I first heard the songs, I was looking for songs that were done by Mimi, and this is not Mimi. This album is truly from Mariah the Elusive Chanteuse. So my overall rating of this album would be four and a half out of five stars. Overall, I love this album. The more and more I listen to it, the more I love it. I'm now at the point where I can play it in my car and just get in there and jam to it. Um, there's a lot of feel-good songs, a lot of summer songs, a lot of songs to make you think about what you've been through but overall it's I can really understand when um, I've heard people say this is probably her greatest cohesive album it really is that okay so I listened to the preview on iTunes radio and that's how I've heard all these songs but of course the album comes out today so if you have not please just go check it out on iTunes um, you should be able to hear like a snippets of each song, but if you like what you hear, I would say go ahead and definitely purchase it, especially if you are a Mariah Carey um, fan pre the Mimi stage. This is just a wonderful album, and I think that everyone would enjoy it. She's been getting a lot of rave reviews, and a lot of people who even said they didn't like her Mimi stage, they're loving this album, and that they found no songs that they didn't like. I'm going to start, of course, with the first song, and that is Cry. Initially, I thought the song was rather boring, but as I listened to the lyrics, I realized this was a great song. Um, I like the music in it. Of course, I mainly like the song for its lyrical content, but I think Cry is a great song, and it's also a really great song to open the album with. I think this album goes through a full range of emotions from what you've been through, where you've come from, where you are now, and the future. I just really, I really love this album. The next song on the album is Faded, and to me, this is just a classic feel-good Mariah song. This song kind of puts me in the mind of uh, We Belong Together, how she takes you through an initial storyline of the song. Um, this kind of reminded me of songs in the period of Mimi, but once again, this is just a really great lyrical song from Mariah. And this song, this is like the Mariah Carey that we've been missing. This is the type of song that I've been looking for and I, I really love Faded. The third song is Dedicated and this also reminds me of a fun summer song. It kind of takes you back to older Mariah Carey from like the 90s but it's definitely a feel-good summer song. Um, this is just a song that I could really listen to and just dance. You like the words, the music, um, how it's put together. It just really puts me in the mindset. 
just like they're talking about earlier in the song it's like your favorite thinking of your favorite nostalgic time this is what this song is for me so i really love dedicated the fourth song is beautiful and i know uh slams out there we heard this song probably last year when she debuted it on good morning america for their summer concert series and this song it's just it's another summer feel-good song. I really like it. Um, it features Miguel. It just really is a feel-good Mariah Carey song. I don't know what else to say about it, but I do love it. It's, it's not a song that I'm going to sit up and dance to, but it's definitely a song that you can jam to. And it, the words are nice, and overall, I really liked Beautiful as well. Okay, the fifth song on the album is Thirsty. And I have to admit, when Thirsty debuted or premiered on the radio or whatever about a week ago, um, I wasn't impressed. I thought, why is Mariah Carey using um, vernacular of today, popular vernacular, and putting in a song like, you're better than that, Mariah. But that's when I realized that Thirsty is a good song. The fact that she put a rich homie Kwan in it kind of brings his um, fans over into Mariah's world. It's a really fun, popular song, and it's just fun to dance to, listen to it with whoever. You can just think of one person in your life who relates to the song Thirsty. And since she's pouring bubbly in Thirsty, I might as well take a sip. I like that it's upbeat, it's fun, it's something you can dance to, it's something the gals can twerk to if they would like to do that. I just think Thirsty is a song that everybody's going to love. It gets you hype, it gets you dancing. Um, of course, it's not a ballad like we, uh, some people would expect from Mariah, but it is still a good song. It's catchy, you can play it on the radio. I think that um, it can be played by lots of different people who enjoy Mariah's music. So I did start to like Thirsty and now I love it, especially when I'm driving in the car. <laughs> The sixth song on the album is Make It Look Good. And as soon as I heard this song, it was an instant hit for me. It It's a feel-good summer song, just like a lot of the songs, but it also has a more classic vibe. You have Stevie Wonder playing his harmonica. When I was playing it in my kitchen, my mom was like, wow, who is that? I, I can instantly recognize a good song when I hear it. So Make It Look Good is definitely a good song. It has a classic vibe. It's just... This is like the true essence of Mariah Carey, the elusive Chanteuse, whatever you want to call her. This is what I think of when I hear her music. It's something like this, especially for a more popular song that's not a ballad. She truly demonstrated her vocal range. I just love when Mariah Carey has catchy songs that are fun and flirty that you can dance to, you can vibe to. And at the same time, she's also showing her vocal ability. That to me is just like... Mariah, you did that. So Make It Look Good is definitely another one of my favorites. And the seventh song is Your Mind Eternal. Now, we first heard this song around Valentine's Day when she put it out as a single and she immediately also included a video. And I wasn't too fond of the video because it was just very magical, mystical, um, fairy tale land. I just wasn't feeling the video. And at the time, when I'm hearing a song for the first time and seeing a video also, whatever the reaction I have from the video is going to translate into how I feel about the song. So at first, I did not like Your Mind Eternal, but as I listened to it, I'm just really loving the song and it really did grow on me. This also puts me in the mind of a We Belong Together type of song where she's just like, I can't give you up your mind, your mind eternal. And it's just, I love this song. I know some people still aren't feeling this song, but I think the more you listen to these songs, especially if you're a true lamb and you're a fan of Mariah's classic music, the more you listen to them, I think the more they will grow on you. And that is definitely what Your Mind Eternal has done for me. If I probably went back and watched the video now, I would probably like the video even more. do and this features Wale. This song just makes me want to go skating and just shake my little lamb tail off. I just I really love this song. I heard this song for the first time when she performed this past year at the Good Morning America summer concert and I don't know if it was just because it was live and maybe the first time they had both performed it together but I wasn't feeling it. I didn't like the way it sounded. It, it just I was like, why is Mariah Carey constantly putting out these songs that just sound off? 
And we all know that Mariah Carey is not the same live singer as she used to be, but um, when you listen to the song on the album, you get the true essence of the song and you can hear it from a studio album perspective, which is when Mariah performs her best, let's just face it. And this song is definitely a song that I just see myself vibing to with, with friends and just skating and having a good time. It's definitely, this is probably the number one summer song of the album, I think. It's just a really fun song and the fact that Wale's in it gives it like a different perspective. And like I said earlier, it kind of brings his audience over to Mariah. So once again, Mariah knows what she's doing. And this is probably my favorite song on the album, the favorite one. The next song is Supernatural, and this song is probably the cutest, most loving song on the album, and it features hashtag Dim Babies, which are affectionately known as Rock and Roll, Miss Monroe, Cannon Scott, and Mr. Moroccan Cannon Scott, and those are her twin babies, if you don't know. And when I first heard the song, my initial um, response was, she's trying to do a Beyonce with Blue Ivy. And as I listened to it more, I was like, this is a really good song. It's kind of cute how she has her kids in it. You can't hate a song with someone's kids on it, especially Mariah Carey's twins. And at the end of the song, um, Miss Monroe says, I'm an elusive chanteuse. And Mariah says, of course you are, darling. And that right there just solidified the fact that I love Mariah as a mother. I love this song. I love the fact that she incorporated her kids in it. And it really is a beautiful song. Okay, the 10th song on the album is Meteorite, and I have to say this is the song that I'm most um, disappointed about. I can't get into this song for the life of me. I do keep listening to it in hopes that it will grow on me, but it has not yet. Maybe in the future it will, but right now I'm just... I'm not feeling meteor right. It puts me, it's like a 70s, 80s song, and I wasn't even born then, so I can get into meteor right, but I can see how other people would like it. It's just simply not my style. But it is a great dance song, so if you're looking for a Mariah Carey dance song, this just puts me in the mind of like disco days, so yeah. Okay, the 11th song on the album is Camouflage. And this is a really nice song lyrically and melodically. Um, this is another song that hasn't yet grown on me, but I am starting to like it more and more. It's like, I don't know, it's giving me what I need from Mariah, but it's still not one of my favorites, though it is a good song. I'm definitely liking it and hoping that as I listen to the album more and more, it will grow on me. It's not my favorite, but it's definitely not a bad song. And I've actually heard people who really love this song. So the 13th song on the album is Money, and uh, it's a cute-ish song. I can see what they were doing with it by putting Fabulous on the song. It's definitely more of the Mimi style, so I do like it. It's not my favorite, of course. I really love Mariah Carey Ballads. Of course, We Belong Together is my favorite Mariah Carey song. I don't know if she'll ever be able to um, put out that quality of song again that people will love as much as they did, but... I definitely like the Money song. It's catchy, it's cute, it's a fun summer song. Uh, she was smart by putting another rapper on it. It's great, it sounds good. It kind of reminds me of like uh, the Honey days, like the song Honey. Um, so this is also one that I hope will grow on me because as of yet, it's still not my favorite, but it is a good song and I like it. The 13th song on the album is entitled One More Try. Oh, and before I get to that, let's um, introduce the two elusive people in the review. We now have our special guest. Hey. And we special have... Special guest number one. <laughs> this is special guest number two, the elusive Lammy. So because we are all lambs, um, I figured why not bring a Lammy into the mix? No, so, I'm a lamb. You're an honorary lamb. I'm an honorary lamb. I'll take that. Okay. So, One More Try, it's another one of the few songs on the album that I didn't like initially when I first heard it. I thought it was kind of boring, I don't know, it kind of sounded churchy to me, between churchy and something that was just before my time. It just sounds like something that came out before I was born, and so I just can't really connect with it. It sounds like a church song without having the lyrics of God in it. Yeah. Um. I think what she's trying to say is she 
She's a newer lamp. I, I guess. told them I like the Mimi. Oh, so you already told. Okay, so yeah. So this is more Mariah, less Mimi. I like one more try. Um, like you said, it is. It it has strong gospel influences. Um, but it's, it's a weird cover because of a, is it a cover of a gospel song? No, it's not. It's a cover. It's actually it's a cover of a um, George Michael song. Um, he's big. Girl, he was big in like the eighties. Yeah, um, before I was born. I'm a young lamb. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, I I like the song. Um, I like the lyrics. Um, she, it's very soulful. It's like the you know the classic Mariah that. You yeah, know, I started I, liking her around Music, music Box. Box. Yeah, that was like the my first. I mean, I knew like Vision and Love and stuff, but that was like the that was when Dream Lover came out. Like that was when I first really, really, really liked her. So yeah, she's you know back to that stuff. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That was one thing I put in my notes that this is probably classic Mariah, and because I'm more of a Mimi fan. This one just doesn't do it to me. Like I said, in some of the other songs, maybe it will grow on me, but as of right now, it's a good song. It's just not for me, I don't think. The 14th song on the album is Heavenly, No Ways Tired, Can't Give Up Now. And I like this song because it infuses, well, I haven't heard No Ways Tired, but I've heard Can't Give Up Now. And this is a good gospel song. It'll probably replace some of the other gospel songs I like to listen to the very few times that I want to feel inspired and listen to gospel um of course she put her mariah spin on it i could just see her in the booth going like this and <laughs> so um i love it she brought her mariah however many octave voice she has to the song and i think that really made it interesting i really like this one too it's like this is probably my favorite inspirational mm -hmm. song from her since um fly like a bird and I it's really kind of that. similar to that and like at the end of it when they do the no ways tired and they do the it's like slave stuff well not it's Those like real words. it's like oh, like real old churchy when they would just like you know stomp on the floor floor yeah, I know floorboards and use their hands and stuff it's in my top five of all time or the album of of the album it's not in my top, you'll hear my top songs at the end. It's not up there just because I don't listen to Mariah for gospel. If this was Kirk Franklin, possibly, but <laughs> I listen to Mariah to go like this when I'm singing or to, you know, dance in the car. So that's, that's the only reason why it's not one of my favorites, but it is a good song and she showcased her vocal abilities on it, so I love it. 15th song on the album is Me, I Am Mariah, The Elusive Chanteuse, or Chanteuse, shall we say. And this was the last song before all the bonus songs. Um, and I felt like it really brought the whole album together. One, because it's, called, it's entitled the name of the whole album. And I don't know, I just... She explains, you know, what went into it, why it's titled, what it oh, is. Oh, she did? Wait, did I know yeah, yeah, It's song? like an interlude. So, um, disregard everything I said because she just kind of, she had a brain fart. <laughs> well, all I got from that song while I listened to This is what happens when you download stuff before it comes out. Don't tell my secret. Well, it, all well, I got from that it. song, what, I have heard what he's talking about. It's just not um, entitled that in um, my iTunes, yeah. but so I'll let him describe it because clearly I was It's confused. a quick little interlude. She, um... You know, she's just talking about the title of the album, why she titled it that. She's explaining the uh, the self-portrait that she did that's on the back of it and how she saw herself at three and a half years old and saying, you know, like, don't judge her for the, uh, like, maybe the, I don't know, the simplistic title or whatever. The the self-portrait she actually titled. The simplistic Me, title. Me, I am Mariah. Oh. So that, yeah, yeah, that part, she, she said that she um, titled that when she was three and a half years old. Allegedly. Do we really believe, this is a side note, do we really believe that Mariah Carey as a young three-year-old lamb, elusive, chanteuse lamb, do we even really believe that she drew the self-portrait? I yeah, don't. If she said she did, if she said she did, I believe. Like, if she said that she did it, I believe. I believe. <laughs> Stop. Not your phone. If, if she says she drew it, I believe it. Mariah actually likes this too. I Shout think. out to Evian Manrawar. The 16th song on the album is It's a Rap, the remix. And I think this is the one featuring Mary J. Blige. It is. 
Um, this is this was always one of my favorite songs from Memoirs of an Imperfect. Yeah. Memoir. Um, I just no, I just like Mariah saying like it's a rap for you, baby. I don't know. I really like this song, but he has more to I say. I like this. I like put all your sh in the elevator. It's going, going down, down like a denominator. It's hilarious. You it's the martini. Like, I like Mary J. Yeah. Blige, and I think that um, I think that they're um, they they sounded they sound alike. Like it was Mary weird. J. Blige got her Mariah's like phrasing and stuff down to. But like, even vocally, and I never thought that Mary J. Blige and Mariah Carey sounded mm -hmm. alike. But in this song, it's like whoa. You could tell the difference, but they do sound a lot yeah. alike. They blend well together. The way that Mary J. Blige said Maury Povich, I mean, she sounded like she was in the kitchen cooking grits, frying bacon, and making biscuits. So I, I, I loved it. The 17th song on the album is Bet You Gonna Know Remix featuring R. Kelly. And I'll let him talk about this because I didn't really listen to it much. Bet You Gonna Know is one of my favorite songs from Whatever. the Memoirs album, the last one. Yeah, and um, I really love that album. It's yeah, it's, it's bomb, and R. Kelly fits really well on it. I think he actually rewrote some of the lyrics, and it fits well together. He she told it from her like Mariah Carey did like the woman's perspective. R. Kelly did like the man's perspective. Kind of answered what she was saying. And the last song of the album is the Art of Letting Go. This doesn't feature anybody, does it? No. No. And uh, I believe this came out a while ago as a single, and I love this song. I think it was a good way to kind of end the album. So that is the end of my album review. So once again, I give this album four and a half stars out of five. How about you? I would say five out of five. I love it. I think she did a really good job for Mariah Carey's 14th album. It's Everything That's I could have expected well, and more. wanted and more. Yes, he made I, was, I was shocked. For that to be her 14th album, you would expect something completely lackluster mm -hmm. and just like, what is this? But that's actually a really good album for, for it to be her 14th. My favorite songs on the album are Cry, Make It Look Good, Faded, Dedicated, You Don't Know What To Do, which is my favorite one on the whole entire album. Heavenly and hashtag beautiful. And my least favorite songs, just to throw that out there, they are Year Right and Money. So that's it for this Cheers. album review. I hope you enjoyed it. And stay tuned for the next video. Bye.